to another episode of the Gamers Lounge Podcast. My name is John Meadows. With me as always, Eric, uh, Nathaniel, and Robert. How's it going, guys? Hey, it's guys. going. We also have a chat room. Fantastically. We have several in the chat room already, which is awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, welcome, chat. It's yeah. good to have you here. Yeah. So right off the top, if you don't know, we do live stream the uh, recording of the podcast. It's not like a video podcast or anything like that. But it's just it's just something we've uh, started doing so we can have a chat room uh take live questions and things like that so it's on our twitch channel so uh it's twitch.tv slash the gamers lounge so you can subscribe and uh get notifications when uh when we do go live but so uh i guess we'll just start like we always do with what we've been playing what's been going on so i haven't played too too much i did beat breath of the wild the other day finally i finally, oh, nice. I finally bit the bullet and finished it uh, I put like five minutes into Breath of the Wild, so I didn't really list it on my games played. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's about all I played. It was about ten minutes. It only took me about ten minutes to beat the last boss. I mean, it was really cool. I'm glad I, I got all the the you know the um, memories so I could get that uh, mm. get that you know real ending or correct ending, happy ending, whatever kind of different ending it is. But all, you know what I did was um, I. Uh, I bought the house finally, mm. and then I just fully upgraded it. Don't have any weapons to put in there or anything like that. I just did it for you know for craps and giggles. But uh, the only thing that yeah. I put in there is like my weapons I get from my uh, amiibo that I don't want to lose. Mm. I'll throw them in there and hang them up. Or if I get something really, really, really cool that's like glowy, um, it's kind of cool to hang it on the wall because it'll glow on the wall. So yeah. when you come in at night, your whole room. I was all the elemental weapons. That with yeah. that house, like. <laughs> You know, you fully upgrade it, and you don't even have a bed that can heal you. Like, what's no? Well, yeah, you do. It's upstairs. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's upstairs. There's it a bed it in doesn't there. heal you. It yeah, it does. You. you go to sleep, and it'll not heal the you. Soft, it's not the soft. Well, bed. it doesn't give you the extra. It doesn't give you the extra hearts, but it does heal you. Right. It just doesn't oh, give yeah. you the extra hearts. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it does heal you if you if you sleep it's through the nothing. night. It's just a regular bed. Yeah, it's you just a regular bed. You didn't pay for the soft awesome. No, you got you didn't pay for that soft <laughs> extra one. You got to get that they, they, I would have. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm, to, I'm hitting those strikes like 80 percent of the time now. You need to you know talk to the <laughs> you know the uh, the guy with the the pink thing that built your house and you know see if he can yeah. get you one of them tempur beds. He won't, he won't do just, anything for me. Was it just me or did that whole guy have a lot of weird innuendos? <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, whenever you're building something, yeah. and he like points to the guy behind him, and that's all some stupid pun. Yeah, it's a like a few of them, definitely. <laughs> like okay, that's it's not be... just there though. There's lots of places in Breath of the yeah. Wild where there's like characters. You're like, that sounds very horny, and I totally think it's on purpose. Yeah, no, it's like <laughs> it's it, really it's, weird. A couple there's, times, there's no it's... doubt in my mind. I'm like, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's, you know, I'm sure, you know, some people would, you know, younger people would just go over their heads, but a couple of times I'm like, oh my gosh, that was, that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> or especially like the great fairies, the further you get oh in my gosh. upgrades. Those yeah. things, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like the one. Make sure, make sure no one's watching me when I'm playing. If I'm about to go to one of those, <laughs> yeah. It's so I like the one that has the hair that's like really huge, like over her face, like hanging. Remember. It's kind of this funky, cool, crazy hair, dude. I like the one. They're in all the, slightly different. I like the one in the desert because when she first upgrades your weapon, the first thing or whatever your outfit, the first thing she does is she grabs you and she hugs you and then pulls you down in the water. That has nothing to do with that. That has yeah. nothing to do with that. That's whatever level you're upgrading something, they all do the same thing. Oh, do they? Okay. Mm. So the first I... level is just a little thing, and then the next level is like uh, a little bit more goofy. Then the third level of enchanting an armor is like the kiss, I think. And then the fourth one is the grabbing you, pulling you into the water. Stuff. I never never paid any attention because when, yeah. uh, when I would unlock one that was uh, in a different area, I'd always just go to that one. So I didn't even... No, that yeah, there's at least the other three of them that I would go to just because I was like, oh, on this side of the map, I didn't have to scroll as far to go teleport to whatever one yeah. I wanted to go to. And so, yeah, it has to do with what level of enchant you're putting on your armor. I got you. I didn't even... Or upgrade or whatever you want to call it. Didn't even realize that. Had no idea. Um, but yeah, so I played that. I got Mario Kart 8. I've been playing a lot of it. I haven't tried it. I tried it online for maybe about 20 minutes the other day just to see how it worked. It works really well. I mean, wirelessly. I didn't try it on the, uh, you know, I have my Switch dock hardwired, so I don't, I'm sure it works fine on that. But, I mean, it looks fantastic on the Switch. Um, mm -hmm. It looks even mm -hmm. better than it did on the Wii U, and I thought it looked really good on the Wii U. Uh, but 1080p looks fantastic on TV. 
Um, I don't like using the uh, the Joy Cons sideways. They're I think I feel like uh, they're harder to use than the Wii Motes were. I didn't ever even try it. It's Pro Controller or handheld mode. That's it. I didn't even try to use the the thing sideways. Never. Man, it's uh, yeah. It, it, it's it makes you cramp up. I figured. It's like there's no reason I would ever use a Joy Con that way. If a game I mean, wants you to control I, that I way, I just got the game. <laughs> I just got the game, and I was yeah. playing with with michelle and i was just like hey let's let's do this and i'm just sort of i'm like oh my god it's awful and they're offset and i'm just like no yeah, what am i yeah. doing that would be the only way that i would do it is if there was a, a weird situation i was out somewhere and somebody wanted to play two player and we set it on the table and popped it off and played it that way other than that it's always going to be connected to the game right. or the controller thing or a uh pro thing hey, eric you got a little bit of popcorn there on your lip it's uh... yeah i got it <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just, just dropped several pieces on the floor. Just wanted to make sure. It's, it's like us. It's like us at the movie theater last night. We were sitting in these seats, and they <laughs> tilted back. They tilted way back, way farther back than I thought. And we're eating popcorn. And the next thing I know, I look down, and I just got popcorn all over my chest. I'm just like, oh man, I'm saving it. <laughs> I hate that crap. But anyway, um, speaking of movies, I did play Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy Episode 1. I bought the season pass on uh, mm. PS4. It's not nice. too bad. I like it. Just Episode 1. Isn't that Episode 2 out now? Uh, I don't mm. know if 2's out yet or not. Or when, su- I thought I saw somewhere that it was out. Maybe it was just a review that was early or something. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I or I misread it. <laughs> I haven't had it on since I bought it yeah. last week and uh, downloaded the first episode and played it. So maybe if I, if I turn on the PlayStation, it may be there. It's a... It's, well, it's a telltale game. It's yeah. the action's a little different than the other mm-hmm. than the other uh, uh, telltale that games. Is true. It's a little slower. Um, there's a lot more find this detective like stuff where you're scanning things and this and that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the stories is kind of interesting. Um, it's kind of like the movie, but different. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. There's a lot of it as as you're playing. It's like, oh, this kind of feels like the first movie, and then they then it's totally something different, but. Um, but nonetheless, it is interesting. And the only other thing I tried, I did uh, get a code for Marvel Heroes Omega Beta on the PlayStation Four. Um, wanted... Is that like, is that a like MMORPG or like a MOBA? No, it's like um, it's kind of like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but it's hmm. all um, it's like free to play. So you hmm. pay to unlock characters, and it's been on the PC for quite a long time because uh, yeah, I remember I playing it on the PC. And then uh, I thought, well, I'll try it on. It, and it feels just fine on PlayStation 4 because it's, like I say, it's it's kind of that Marvel Ultimate Alliance kind of feel to Got it. it. So definitely would be fun with friends, but and, you know, having to pay. You can use in-game money to unlock characters, but it takes a long time to get the in-game money saved up. So um, I think I got unlocked Ghost Rider the other day just to have him. I don't know. There were so many characters to choose from. It's like, you could get a free character. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know which one to choose because there's so yeah. many. <laughs> is, is it all like mostly uh, AAA guys or is it a lot of like B, B, B Oh, it's too? it's everybody. It's literally like everybody. I mean, from Ghost Rider to Rocket Raccoon to Star-Lord to Captain America and everybody in between. There was There must have been 30, 30 characters. Yeah. And I don't know if that's like the final base uh, for the game or if they'll go back and I'm sure they'll probably add some from time to time, but, um, during special events and things, but I don't know if there's just a limited number of them through the beta, but there was at least 30, um, to choose from. Wow. And you can go ahead and buy them and everything like that. I have to look at the packs and see if like the $60 pack, if you just go ahead and pay like the $60 pack, what you get in and if that unlocks everybody or what, cause I mean, it's a good enough game if, um, if I get a, if some of my buddies pick it up and we want to play it, then I'll pay, you know, I would pay whatever I would pay for it, you know, for a full price game, just to unlock everything. If we play it enough, um, we did. Oh, I didn't put it on the list, but I did play some ghost uh, recon, uh, wildlands the other night. You know what? That game is bull crap by yourself it is the most bull crap game to play by yourself. <laughs> that I've ever played in my life. I thought, well, you, you really know like what? To say what he really feels. <clears throat> well, you know, well, you know I, I thought, well, you know, I'll just, I'll do some missions because when I walked, when I joined up with them the other night, they were on the last two missions of the game. It was like we got to the, they got to the last <laughs> boss and none of us could get in except the one dude because we hadn't went and killed all the cartel heads and he had. So I was like, well, let me try to get ahead or, you know, try to catch up by playing by myself. Oh my gosh, that is trash playing it by yourself. But you get on oh, there yeah. with like three or four friends and playing a group. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. I laugh. I'm in a base in the basement. The bedroom is upstairs way over here. I was, we were laughing 
laughing so loud. Or I was laughing so loud. I woke my wife up in the middle of the night. Um, oh man! But I mean, it's it's fun with a group. It's like GTA set in the jungle or something like that mm. with military yeah. weapons. So I mean, pretty much the minute I logged on, they were like, "Okay, we're going to take you over here. This is where the best um, gun rifle is. We're going to take you over here. This is where the best uh, sniper rifle is. Okay, you've got all the best equipment. Now let's just go kill everything." <laughs> It's like, I've been in this game five minutes. <laughs> I don't even know what buttons do what. And you've already got me with the extended mag, the silencers, the you know the best of everything. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But when I play it by myself, it's like, ugh. But playing it online with buddies, yeah, it's a, it's a blast just to go blow stuff up. Hop in a helicopter and fly across the map. And the map is huge. I yeah, mean, it is. It's it's a big. Spinner wants to know if it has uh, couch co-op. What's that? Ghost oh. Recon House have couch ca- couch co-op? No. Couch yeah. co-op? No. No, it doesn't have couch co-op, and I don't think that Marvel game has couch co-op either, because it's online only. So I think you can only you know you got to connect to the server to play it. So I think you even have to play it with friends too. But no, Ghost Recon doesn't have couch co-op. At least I don't think it does. If it does, there, I've it never seen. Looks like he was talking about Marvel. Yeah. My bad. No, Marvel doesn't either. Um, not that I know of. It didn't give me the option for two player. Uh, it just just because the minute you uh, click the boot it up, it connects to the server and then it throws you into a uh, lobby where there's a bunch of people at. So, if there was couch co-op, I didn't see any anything that would allow it. So, I don't know. I'll have to. I have to check. I didn't look, honestly. I didn't pay that much attention. I don't have friends come over. They're all online. <laughs> nobody nobody comes over and plays with me. <laughs> I don't know. I'll You're check so it. darn far away, John. I guess, yeah. Aww. Uh, but I'll check it. I'll check it out next uh, next chance I get and see if it if it does or not. I, I honestly didn't pay that close of attention to it. I just I kind of just assumed it didn't. So. But uh, so who wants to go next? Who's been playing what? I know. Robert's been playing Mario Kart, I see. Yeah, I played, I mean, just a couple rounds of it. Um, I also played uh, some more of Styx, Shards of Darkness, trying nice. to prep for my review on that one. Um, you know, I'm, you know, quick impressions on it. I don't want to spoil the review or anything, but since the game's out, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I, I think it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's got some really great humor, and um, it doesn't look too bad. It's, and did you uh, play the first one? I did not. I didn't play the first one at all. I got the so first So I didn't really know what I was getting into. But it's this is uh, almost purely a stealth game. I mean, there's there's really no fighting in, in this game. You can parry, and then if, if you're lucky enough to parry him, you can kill him. But other than that, you're sneaking around. Um, you can kill him if you sneak up on him. you got distraction tools. It's To me, it's very reminiscent of um, Splinter Cell back mm. in the day. But obviously, I was going to think no like guns. Thief, maybe. But it still sounds kind of cool. Um, yeah, I mean, because, like, you go around, there's torches and stuff, and you can knock out the torches to create darker areas. Um, but then you also have, like, a mix of the old Metal Gears in there where you can see, like, their line of sight. So you kind of know, like, where you can walk around and things like that. But it's pretty, it's pretty good. I like um, the, uh, the original one. I got it somehow. I don't remember. Free on PlayStation Plus or something. It was free on PlayStation Plus at some point, but I never played it. I played it once. See, twice. what else are they doing? <laughs> I've uh, been playing Jackbox Party Pack uh, a little bit yeah, here and there. I haven't had a chance game. to play it with um, with too many people. It's just me and Michelle. Uh, it, it supports up to, like, like I think eight people or something, so I need to get some more people over so that I can test that out. But it's it's a lot of fun. That game's great. I've heard good things about it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know I hope that there's enough material in there that after I play it a few times, I'm not going to start seeing repeat answers. Uh, but this is really the first Jackbox I've spent any time with, so I don't really know and how they handled it in the past. Yeah, well, that's always the question is, you know, how often or how uh, repetitive do the questions get or the activities or whatever is in it? You know, how, how deep is it? You know, you start right. The I same mean, if I'm, if I'm playing it so many more times, you know, than the people I have over, once they come over, it's not even going to be fun anymore because it's like, oh, I've seen this question a million times. I know the answer now. Yeah. Right. It looks like... Uh, Spinner, it looks like it says that there's local co-op is confirmed for the Marvel game, but I did, like I said, I didn't look at it. Anyway, mm-hmm. I was just kind of going online there to see if I could find something. So maybe it does. Well, anyway, check cool. in the box. I was going to say, going back to Mario Cat, Mario Kart, real quick. Mario um, Kart. 
Mario Kart's great. I mean, it's it's the same Mario Kart we know and love. It it looks better. It uh, you know, frame rate's better. But see, I don't like that. That's where I'm going with this. Uh, I I don't have any incentive to play Grand Prix mode. So for me, I mean, all you do is you get the coins and you can unlock you know stuff yeah. for your cars. But there was already no sense of progression in that game, and now what little bit there was is completely wasted. Well, but. But I wonder I mean, if they they it's did great that. multiplayer. Yeah, and I wonder if they did that because, you know, they figured, I don't know. It's a fine line you could walk, I guess. You could say, well, you know, we're going to unlock everything because you know it's a game that's you know however old, five years old, four four years old, three years old. I don't remember how old it is now. I don't even know anymore. Uh, yeah, I've lost track of when it came out. Probably but, three years. Yeah, so you know, it, it's people's played it. Are they really going to want to you know buy it again and then sit down and play through all? I don't, the, see, I don't. I doubt it. I doubt that's their mentality. How many people had a Wii U? Ten well, million. I know. That's it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know? I know a lot of people didn't have, but I don't know. To me, I, I'm fine with it because then I just don't have to sit down and do it all again to unlock everything. And all I got to do is just unlock the costumes and the the vehicles. And I, if I if I unlock them, great. If I don't unlock them, I'm fine with that. It's um, it's exactly yeah. two years old. Somebody in the chat is it? Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember. That would, that would be three. three. Yeah, it'd be three, 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 three. three. I can do math, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm yeah. chat. We'll, we'll eat them alive. Yeah, but no, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it was it was kind of strange, though, to boot it up and then realize, that, oh, it's all unlocked. I can just go right to 200 yeah. if I want to go to 200. Yeah. But, and you know, I did that. Not a good idea. <laughs> no, no, it's not. You got to get, you got to ease back into it. <laughs> right. It's been three years since I played it. I yeah. Been done. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I go back and forth with it. And I know a lot of people were fussing because, you know, because of that. And then they were like, well... You know, I shouldn't have to pay sixty dollars for it because I paid sixty dollars for it. Blah blah blah. It's a three year old game. Why would I pay sixty dollars for it again? I'm like, look, you paid sixty dollars. You, you know, Elder Scrolls came out, then they came out with the Game of the Year edition. The Batman games do it. Everybody does it. They HD remakes, whatever you want to say. This is no yeah. different than any of that. I mean, it's it's just, all the DLC you like the price, from the first game into right. Through. You know, a buy to get one sale at yeah. some place. I mean, yeah. I see Black why it's Friday, 60, yeah. I have no problem buy with that. Best buy of gamers come unlocked. I mean, ugh. my problem with Mario Kart is I know that I personally won't play that much of it, so I don't want to spend the sixty bucks on it. But I yeah. see that it's worth sixty bucks. I don't think they should charge less than that. No, well, I don't either. I don't. So know yeah, that. it's it's more my end of like, yeah, yeah, I don't. I know about how much I would play it. Not worth it for me, but. Still looks like a really cool Mario Kart game. I got it because I figure we'll eventually have a a, a game night at some point, yeah. or set up a tournament yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, we'll do something with it because we always do. Same here. And I won't play it much on my own, if at all. No, I mean I've been playing it a little bit on my own, just like a couple races before I go to bed or something like that, or hop online mm-hmm. and play a couple races or something like that. Did you get a physical or a digital? Uh, I got physical. I bought it off Amazon. Yeah. You know, and that was the other reason why I went ahead and got it at Amazon with the Prime. You know, I think it was like forty seven dollars or something like go. that. So yeah, I, I was price, able to I was able to find a uh, a a uh, used really? in quotation marks used copy <laughs> quotation See, marks yeah in quotation marks it was it was used wink wink <laughs> <laughs> just like I've been trying to find a, a used copy of. Uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris, and there's two stores yeah. in the area that say they have a used copy. But every time you cl- every time I call them, they're like, "No, we don't have a used copy." And there's some kind of system glitch, and it that's that weird. game is ten dollars more if you buy the physical version than just buying it on this you know mm. store. Like, well, and, and okay, I've, sure. <laughs> I've got enough uh, GameStop points saved up where I'll get fifteen dollars off a used game, and I think that game used is thirteen bucks. So I'll only pay sixteen dollars for it if I can find it used. Yeah. But that's the trick: is finding it used. It's too new. I'll get it used eventually. I'm in no hurry for it. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I see where some people could be upset, but at the other end, I'm like, you know what? It's an HD remake. Who cares? I mean, it's just a you know, re-release of an you know, you might as well say a re-release. That's why it's called Deluxe. It's not Mario Kart Nine. Or just Mario Kart yeah. 8. It's, you know, it's. How do you think they're going to handle that? You know, previously they've only had one Mario Kart game per system. Do you think they're going to br- break that trend and pop out a 9 here in a couple of years? I Maybe. guess it just depends on how much it's, how good the system sells. Yeah. If they sell a ton of them, they might, but. I don't have know. to wait a while. Yeah, I mean, it's. It's hard telling at this point. I mean, it could go either way, but I think a lot of it's going to be based on you know the sales of the system before they... Uh... That, and they should consider the sales of this game. So if tons of people are buying 
this Mario Kart and oh, then there you are. put another Mario Kart out in like another year or two years even, that'll feel like really soon we'll be like, I'm still playing this this one. Why do I need a new yeah, one? And that's... So if they do, it's going to have to have some sort of a thing to pull you in that makes it different and yeah. not just, hey, it's Mario Kart again. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the stories in the news is how much it sold. Oh, yeah. How many it sold and how quickly it sold. So It's yeah. Mario Kart. Yeah. It's going to sell pretty well. And all the... the <laughs> You know, well, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we can talk about so, it. Uh, I, I've got some, I got some theories on, or some, uh, some comments on that, but I'll save it. So anyway, <laughs> but yeah, Mario Kart's great. <laughs> yeah. I, Mario Kart. I have, I have fun with Mario Kart. So I'll probably pick it up eventually. Yeah, somebody will have it on sale. Well, maybe. it'd be a good game to have if I just want to play a couple races, especially if I just want to pick up the Switch and do it handheld. Yeah, it'd be a nice way to use it. I just don't need it right now because <laughs> yeah. I've got all this other crap that I'm still trying to catch up on. Yeah. I didn't really need it either, but it's like, and, that, and that's where the, the Amazon thing kind of gets you. Cause it's like, well, yeah. if you order it in the first two weeks, you know, you get 20% off of it. It's like, well, crap, I don't need another frigging game yeah. to throw on the pile, but save that $13, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, you know, some games I won't do that with, but you know, sometimes with like certain Nintendo games, they never go down in price. I don't think Mario yeah, Kart ever true. dropped the price uh, no, unless no, you got to like on a buy, like on a, yeah, like I, a buy it, to get it one. It actually went up in price pre owned to 60. Seriously? <laughs> wow, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> I don't even understand that. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. So, gee, let's see. Eric has been playing a ton of crap. You have so that's many. That's what games. I do. But you didn't put some of your other games that you've been playing on there. I know a couple of you have been playing that you didn't put on there. Your, uh, like the Wisdom Tree games? Yeah. Yeah. Exodus and uh, Spiritual Warrior. Yeah, <laughs> man. Let me I tell only, you, those I games only played those for like, me up. like five or six minutes, and then I was like, ah, I'm gonna go back to Battletoads. Let me tell you something. Those yeah, games are ter- Those games are terrible. The <laughs> oh yeah, but I, but they're oh, so gosh. funny. I was and I was texting, uh, I was texting uh, Eric last night, messaging him last night after I saw that he got him in that in that deal, and I was like, you know what? He asked me. When he first saw it, he's like, were you interested in these games? And I'm like, eh, nah, you know, they're these weird, you know, uh, not official Genesis games that were sold in like Bible bookstores and yep. nah. But then after you pop, after you go looking at them and I was thinking about it, I was like, you know what? Those would be kind of cool to have just because they're so, it's so weird because like the first level of one of the games is like, is they're playing, all the music is hymns. Mm-hmm. in 8-bit style while you're playing or 16-bit style while you're playing a game you know it's playing yeah. all these hymn musics and stuff like that and all I can think Just of here we go it. Simpsons reference again with the Flanders kids <laughs> playing Rod and Todd yeah Rod and Todd playing oh, the man, we got a total a conversion rep- oh no you, you just you just nicked him and made him a Unitarian it was like, <laughs> it was like, it was like oh yeah that's right because they have like a game system too and yeah they had a game system too like and it was good all violent game instead it's, uh, yeah, they're throwing crosses yeah. or something at him. It, and you know, the only the only other Wisdom Tree game I know of was the Noah's Ark Super no, yeah. Super Noah's Ark 3D for Super Nintendo, which was like a, a 3D or an FPS game, mm-hmm. which they actually remade last year. Yeah, something like that. They remade it like a year or two ago, if I remember right. But yeah, Wisdom Tree is not in business anymore. But yeah, no, I remember I seeing those games. back in the day at the you know at the Bible bookstore, you know, being there with mom or something. I'd be like, oh, weird. Here's like this Christian NES game. That's kind of strange, you know. I wonder what uh, that's and when about. You, when you turn them on, they say they're not official Sega yeah. games, too. Yeah. My so, God. Now we're talking. So yeah, those are good. It, go go yeah. do, a, do a YouTube search of it and just watch it. It is so hilarious to hear. Because like, the minute I heard it, I'm like, wait a minute. I know that hymn. <laughs> like, mm, takes me back. Yeah, and I'm like, hey, Nikki, listen to this. And, and all of a sudden, we start singing the hymn, but it's in 16-bit, you know. Music. Yeah. It's like, okay. I mean, but anyway. <laughs> Battle, Battletoads and Double Dragon for Genesis. I think I played the Nintendo one back in the day. It's, it's still pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely need uh, some co op, co op buddy, but it, it was good times. Yeah. It's actually, it's held up pretty well. Controls are nice and tight. It was fun. I played it for about 20 minutes. Also played a little bit of uh, Mortal Kombat 2 because I got a complete copy of that with a uh-huh. little poster and art book and everything, or poster and like manual with the Genesis lot I bought. Yeah. played that. I uh, I did okay against the computer, but I I just don't remember everything. So I, I can do either. okay with 
Raiden or Sub Zero or Scorpion, but that's about it. Yeah, I can do Grail Scorpion, just throw my rope all the time. So throw your yeah, spear. Yeah. Yeah. Sub Zero, mm. I'm like, how do I do the other freeze thing? But it, it's fun. It's you know, those are a couple of the couple of things I picked up. But I also have been playing playing a lot of stuff. I have Guardians of the Galaxy on PC, mm. Telltale Games. I got that for review. It's pretty, it's pretty fun. John already talked about it, and my thoughts are pretty much the same. A lot. Di- a, a little bit different than the other Telltale games. So. Yeah, and I like that. I like it's different. I don't want it to be. In what way is it different? Oh uh, well, there's more like exploring parts. There's vertical bits of it. Star Lord can move up and down. Yeah, uh, I've written a review. He can go up and down and like scan like multi levels. You can like communicate with any members of your team at any time. That's interesting. Yeah, so you like the you combat. Can... The, com- the combat felt slower. That's one thing I noticed. There was there was a decent amount, but it was definitely slower. I thought it was gonna be more fast paced. Yeah, I did too. But yeah, it was kind of cool. I mean, coming off of Batman, which was really fast-paced, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and this well, one's I, I do a lot slower it. than Batman. If you like Guardians, you like Telltale games. Yeah, I played I'm playing Dying Light still. Yeah, I'm trying to get almost done with that game, and then I'll get into the DLC. You're still playing with friends. Yeah, you guys have heard about that before. I tried that Drawn to Death, that game that was free on PlayStation Plus last month. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's pretty interesting. It so reminds Santa Monica. Yeah, it reminds yeah. me of Mad World. If you really, if and I played around with that for a couple hours. So. I've heard a lot of good of things about it. The game looks like yeah. doing is crap to me from what I've seen of it. I was like, no, nope, I never want to play this game. It would just make me annoyed and angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one opinion. It is. I mean, violent. I like the way it looks, but just all of the voiceover stuff and just the attitude tone of the game would just. I couldn't play for very long without. Yeah. Be like I'm done. <laughs> and that's why I haven't booted it up yet, because I'm not real sure if I... I don't know. I hear some people go, oh, it's great. I hear other people go, oh, it's garbage. And then I kind of sit there and I look at things and go, I don't know if I'd really like it or not. I may try it. I don't know. I downloaded it, so... I bought Shantae and the Pirate's Curse on PS4 when that was on sale, where you get, like, they had that sale where you get two games for, like, $20, and I also bought Firewatch. And I tried playing a little bit of that, and that was, that was interesting. It's a platformer, mm-hmm. kind of 16-bit style. I recommend it. Mm-hmm. Played uh, NBA Jam on the Wii. Fired that up just randomly. I don't know. Played some stuff and I realized that somehow, in the midst of shuffling Wii, Wii U, back to Wii, I misplaced my save file. So I had to start all over, which is fine. I don't mind. Just go back to the career mode and back to everything else. Still fun. Computer and computer's still cheap. Yeah. Next to catch up. I run the score up. And that's about it. That's what I've been playing. That's cool. I know uh, Nathaniel played Persona Five because he made a, a a tweet on. I did, and I started. And then I, I stopped. I started Cold. poking. I started poking you when you poking the you bear. He wasn't well, taking. I didn't mention it first because I was complaining about something, and then you and one other of my friends were like Persona. I'm like, yeah. Yes. I didn't respond directly. I just continued my thread. Yeah. I know. <laughs> So I, after that, I that was last Sunday, and I haven't played in it since. Yeah, I've yet to go back. I was like, think thought about it a couple times. I was like, I'm not in the mood to try that thing. I know it's going to take at least an hour, an yeah. hour and a half. No, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much been my thought process the whole week. I understand. But like, I played about an hour of Breath of the Wild. After that, it's like, yeah, I'll play some of that. And it was fun. Yeah. I got the big giant horse. Oh, did you? I love mm. the giant horse. Yeah. It's a little weird because you don't have the little uh, stamina things because it just doesn't no. care. It's like, ah, I'm just big, whatever. Yeah. I have all I'm, the stamina in the world. I'm just big and I'm strong, but I'm not <laughs> real fast. But, I... <laughs> but man, but what, forever, what I love doing with that is when you're on the horse and you see guys out in the field and you just take him and just go, Boom! Like you know, boom! Yep. It's like you see guys go flying through the air because it's just one hit and they're just snap. They're just down. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Did a couple <sighs> shrines. You know, nothing crazy. I'm yeah. Still in. I don't want to go to the final boss mode in that game, so I'm wandering around finding a few things that I haven't yeah, found I'm yet. To get the master sword next, but I'm quite a few hearts shy. Yeah. Well. If you do what yeah. I did, I took all I took a bunch of my stamina hearts away to fill it out all the way, and then I went. And That's got what it. I was hoping to do. And then I went I, back I had and just under two full bars, and then I, you know, it wasn't enough to bring me up to speed. So I was like, oh well, I guess I'll go find some more shrines. That's what I did. I just, you know, <laughs> and then I went back and put all took my hearts off and put stamina on. So kind mm-hmm. of cheated. I don't know. It's not cheating. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> as soon as I can. 
I just want to yeah. get the damn thing, and then I'll put my stamina back. I still think getting the, the Master Sword cutscene was still the coolest cutscene in the game, even more so than the final boss cutscene. I liked. I just liked the whole Master Sword thing, cutscene thing. I wish, I wish there was a way that I could have saved it, or you could go back and watch the cutscenes for stuff like that, because I would go back and watch it again. I'm not going to play it on YouTube. Oh, I know, I know, on YouTube. I mean, I was, I'd like to see it in game. Yeah, just. I don't know. I'm used to having a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One that I can go, ooh, here's something cool. Quick, record that real quick. Yeah. I thought you could watch them in-game. Not the Master Sword one you couldn't. Mm. If you can, I can't find it anywhere. Because you have, you know, all the memories things, but I thought the other ones are also in a menu somewhere, but I haven't looked in a while, so I might be remembering wrong. Well, maybe they are, and I just didn't notice them. I didn't see yeah. them, though. But... I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. It's... Until it gets knocked out by Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I, Persona 5, the week before this one, I'd mm. played like tons and tons of it, and I've gotten over 100 hours in that game. I'm on what I assume is the final boss, and that's what made me just rage quit, because it does a <laughs> stupid video game thing of, hey, you've got this turn-paced uh, RPG, you've got four characters here, if anybody else gets knocked out, it's fine, you can revive them. Everybody has skills, you've got items, whatever, party members KO'd, you can bring them back. You have ones that do it to 50% or to full health, whatever. I've got tons of those. But hey, if the player character dies, game over! Yep. I hate that trope so much. It's yeah. so frustrating in a game like that. I do too. It's like, well, what? Yes, it's bad if you die, but I've got these guys right here. They could just throw their little magic thing on me and bring me back. I promise, game. I promise. Yeah. And that's, I've died twice in the game before that. It was just like, yeah, whatever. It wasn't too bad because of the way I play the dungeons. I didn't lose that much progress yeah. earlier in the game. But that one was in the middle of this stupid multi-stage boss fight that had taken me an hour and a half to get to that point. <laughs> and it's just, it's not, it's the worst boss in the game. It's terrible. I hate it so much because it's boring. All it is is a giant sponge. You don't have any weaknesses to exploit. You just have to keep throwing crap at it and hope you don't die. And, like, all the bosses earlier in the game, they all have some sort of cool, like, gimmick that they do. Yeah. Or some weakness that you can take advantage of where it's like you send a party member over here for a few rounds and then they can do something that gives you an advantage. And if you, you know, don't distract the boss enough or whatever, they can see them and find them. Like, pretty much all of the boss point game, blah, blah, blah. boss fights up to that point in the game have something like that. This one's not. It's just like, hey, I'm a big thing. Try and take all my health away. Oh, good job. Well, now I'm a different big thing. Yeah. Take all my health away. Oh, ooh, you thought you beat me? Nope. Now I'm a slightly different big thing. And you've whittled my health down all the way to, like, maybe 20% left. And you're finally feeling good. Oh, you're just going to die. And I'm not even going to use an instant kill move. And, oh, by the way, you just had someone else use a uh, magic shield on you. So whatever thing I just happened to choose took you from 100% to zero and game over. <laughs> I was pissed. I was so freaking pissed. For half a second, I thought, I should just leave this here so I can suspend mode it. Nope. Powered it all off. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go back into the game. I don't care that I lose more time that way. I'm going to go back at some point and play this. And I know it's going to take longer, but I will try and get a few more items later. Because yeah. at that point in the fight... I've whittled down almost all of my characters because I'm swapping out party members. So I'm using all like six or seven that I've got and everybody's low on energy. So I can hardly even use any skills that do more of the damage and stuff. So I'm just doing regular attacks at that point. I'm like, yeah, okay, I've got everybody healed up. I'm just doing all this stuff. I've got them whittled down and I'm thinking, this is the third form. Maybe this will be the end. And nope, just dead. <laughs> mm. I love that game so much, but I hate it so much at this point too. Yeah, I can see that. Because uh, uh. they have instant kill moves, but it didn't even use one, and it had hit me plenty of times throughout this whole fight, and I had my guy up to a hundred percent, so I don't even know what the hell it hit me with. <laughs> I was like, come on, man, come on! <laughs> but the conceit in that game is really, really, really cool to where. You have a, you like sort of start the game. You have the opening sort of tutorial area, and then you're sort of like it's one kind of like um, I guess heist movies or thrillers and that type of stuff do this, where it's like bookended, where you have somebody 
is here from the future talking about a thing, and then you're like experiencing the past, and then it'll eventually catch up. Yeah. So, I've caught up to that, and now I'm just sort of in you know present time, and. I had a surprise boss fight. There was a multi-stage boss fight that I got through. And then soon after that, I went to do this one. And it's just like, no. Oh. <laughs> it just deflated my... Because I've been, like, binging that game so much. I just couldn't get enough of it. And yeah. just pff, off of it for a week. <laughs> it's yeah. just, like, so... Crash and burn so hard. I'm just like, I couldn't muster up the will to play. It. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna understand that. <laughs> that happens. That's that, that's happened before with me with different games. It's just like, nope, I gotta step away. If I don't, I'm gonna break yeah. something. Yeah, um, I will get back to it because I do want to finish it. And it's gotta have. I'm assuming for a new game plus is in that game because your list of personas that you can get. There are a bunch of them that I'm like, there's no way I've, anyone would get to this level before they finish the game. So yeah. it's got to be for looping back around and playing again. Because I'm like level well, like 61 or something like that. And I in my list, I can see it goes up well into like 80, 90 at least. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen if there's any plus game or anything like that. I don't know. Mm. I, I'm assuming so. Probably. I don't know. Or maybe some DLC or something that maybe makes it. I don't know. I don't know. The way that it goes is I'm thinking that it probably is set up for a new game plus. Yeah, um, because you can go back and you can get all the different skills that you didn't get before. You can get all the different personas you didn't get before. You can find all the like different uh, like uh, people that you didn't max out the first time through. Because I've been pretty good about trying to keep up uh, with all that stuff as I could throughout the game. I maxed out several people, but there's some other ones I just didn't bother doing in that much, and they're level like one or two. Yeah. There's like 20, I think, different relationships that you can build up in the game, if I remember right. So there's a whole lot of stuff in that game. Yeah, yeah, there really is. Well, I know that that sucks. You get all the way there. <laughs> like as soon as you as soon as you made that tweet, I yeah. was like, I know what he's playing, and then I just was like, I gotta poke him, poke, poke, poke. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's just like. <laughs> To go through the whole entire game and play for a hundred something hours before getting anything like yeah. that is just like that just has all of the whole weight of the entire game just like <laughs> boom just crash on top of you. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's mad. He didn't even reply. He's <laughs> he's really mad. He's he's really mad at that game because he didn't even. Well, it's like it happens at the end of the day. It's at like nine thirty, ten o'clock yeah. at night, and I can't start over until the next day, even if I wanted to. I'm just like, nope. Uh, Nope. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it just it made me laugh. I forgot about it till I until I saw. Yeah, it. Oh yeah, like, he put Persona Five in there. It's like oh and yeah. And of course, right. you know all of the bosses, the personalities of them throughout the game, because they're you know bosses, they're conceited and all this stuff. But the mm. last boss is just super special. There's like more than one story reason for you to hate him and just his, the personality he's like taunting you and all this stupid crap and then you know in between stages i'm just like no nah, i hate you so much <laughs> i just want to kill you when you die already uh, that's it i'm done i'm out <laughs> had enough yeah, so that's all I've been playing, not that much. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah just I keep busy. After that, like, this whole week I've been binge-watching Critical Role, because I started watching that from the beginning. Critical Role. It is the uh, the uh, D&D series that the voice oh, actors do. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard about and that. And so they have them, it's all on, like, the Geek and Sundry channel, which has Tabletop, which is Will Wheaton's, like, board game thing, and then yeah. they have Critical Role, a few other shows, and... It's all on like Twitch, but they have it backed up on their YouTube as well. Yeah. So the, I started from the beginning, and so it's videos from like two, almost three years ago and stuff. Huh. And you can see like they started out with a certain level of production, and then oh hey, they've got a little bit more money rolling in, so they can have a little bit more stuff yeah. on their set. And then like you look at more current stuff, and like yeah, that definitely is a successful thing for that channel. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen bits and pieces of it, just highlights here and there, and it's like, you know what, I, I, that seems kind of interesting. I thought about watching yeah. it, but it, then, then when well, I, the I sit cool down to watch something, that I don't think about it. Is all of them are in a bunch of like big video games. Yeah, you have played yeah they're all voice actors. Right. So many things. Like, Well, you know, the one that you'd know the Dungeon Master from would be Overwatch recently. He was McCurry, but he's done lots of stuff before that. Right. Then they have one who she's on there. She was the voice of... Um, Ellie and Last of Us, yeah. among many, many other things. Mm -hmm. 
the, like every so often when they're starting to show that announcement, it was like, hey, this game is coming out or this expansion is coming out, and I'd voice this character in it. Yeah. And then if you look them all up on their stuff, I was like, I've played that game and that game and that game and that game. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. I have but to yeah, check it it's out. fun because they definitely get into their characters a lot. And because they're voice actors, especially the Dungeon Master guy, like whenever they run into just random, you know, characters in a village somewhere, he has all these goofy voices all assigned to him. Yeah. They're all like completely different. He has a pretty big range. And a couple of the characters are definitely trying to be kind of comedic. So they'll do random weird stuff out of the blue. So it's always fun to watch. Yeah. Cool. I was like, since I'm not going to play a video game, I'll watch a bunch of people play D and D. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to add that to my list. I got a, I got a bunch of stuff that I need to clean up and and stuff. So I usually have something playing in the background. It's been Voyager, so it's like I'm kind of burned out on Voyager. So it doesn't take long to get burned out on Voyager. Season it's kind of dull. Season three, episode ten. <laughs> <laughs> that would be about where I'm getting burned out out of it. I'm just, I'm just halfway through it going, man, there's four more years. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> so yeah, maybe time to, time to move on to something else. I do need to watch Iron Fist though. So I guess I need to binge I'm, I'm still rewatching Smallville. Uh, I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> I've been watching, I think, uh, it's season seven. Hell now. on Wheels. I've been watching that a little bit and Better Call Saul. Yeah. That's it. I never, I haven't even saw Futurama. Mad, Put so. that on when I got nothing else going on. Yeah, usually that's what The Simpsons ends up being is stuff in the background. Yeah. So. And if I miss it, I'm like, oh, well, I'll watch it again. Yeah, time. I've seen it a dozen times before. I know what I'm, it's more white noise or anything. So. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into the news real quick. There's not too, too much to talk about this week, but a couple of interesting stories. Uh, I saw this one on Twitter last week. Call of Duty World War II multiplayer will include female characters. Um, which I think is very cool. A lot of female characters or females play Call of Duty, so it would be nice to have. Well, it's just characters. any game, especially if it's just a multiplayer where all you need is sort of like the character model and some movement. Yeah. Well, there why was, not why have not? them in there? It's not <laughs> yeah. really that difficult, right. despite you know a few years ago Ubisoft talking about how oh it's so hard. Well, like, not really. What what it's popped just it. it? What popped this one out to me was I was like, okay, so online, of course, multiplayer, female, sure, yeah. it's awesome, no big deal. But man, the people online on Twitter and stuff just started hammering them, going, "Well, that's not historically accurate. There's no women in World War II." And I'm oh like, yeah, okay, okay. I was like, "Hang Look on, at a history minute. book." Yeah, time out, time out, time out. <laughs> there like, may I'm not done. there there was there was women, and especially on the Russian side, there was women yep. snipers and everything else. I you know, if you've seen any movies, um, what was that one? Oh, what was that one World War Two movie it had Ewan McGregor in it? And it was, uh, I think it was Ewan McGregor. Or it was a World War Two movie, an, and he was a sniper. Or enemy, but uh, enemy, enemy at the gates. Yeah, maybe that was it. Enemy at the gates. It's been a yeah, long not, time. Since. I don't. Is that him? I don't think that's him. In that. That's not him. Is that, that not movie? him? What I don't no, know. It's it been, been a it long is, time is, since I've seen it. It's like you know the Russian side of things. Yeah, it's the Russian side of things. I can't Scott, remember uh, who's in it, but oh yeah, it's got Jude Law. That's right. Jude Law. That's it. I always get those two mixed up for some reason. It's I don't know movie. why. Don't don't look at me that way, Nathaniel. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, I see your brain moving, going. Wait a minute, I don't know how he it had Ed Harris. Had Ed, Ed Harris in it too. That's the only yeah. person I ever. But, you know, it's like, well, what was funny was, is somebody tweeted a, a picture, a, a screen cap of the guy's tweet about how historically inaccurate it is that women were in World War II and da 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 And then the very next tweet he had was, oh, there's going to be a zombie mode in the game? Awesome. <laughs> I'm like, now, wait a minute. That's, that's so, really historically accurate. Yeah, so, so you're upset that there's women, uh, there's no, female that's a characters. No, different mode. See, regular multiplayer is historically accurate, but zombies <laughs> is a different thing. I don't know. It just really cracked me up that so many people were upset that there was there was female characters well, it, in the multiplayer it's call of duty it's the most dude bro franchise and well, all yeah. the 12 year olds get upset about everything so why not get upset about this i one? don't know i it's guess dumb. but there's so many female females <laughs> who you, play call of duty online i yeah, think it's a great idea if you don't want to play as the female character you don't, don't. Have you don't to. have to having more choices for people is not a bad thing now you know <laughs> okay if they had some female uh infantry guys storming the beaches in normandy during the single player of the game i might go eh, that might not be right but i mean we're talking multiplayer here there's yeah, the multiplayer but even then it's call of duty it's not trying to be historically right. accurate in any campaign they've ever done in any of the games no, so uh -uh. 
whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It <laughs> it's just Call of Duty. It's, it's not you know a documentary. So crack me up though that I was like, really, we are in 2017 and people are going to fuss over a video game having female characters in their multiplayer. I just I I could not. <laughs> I was just, I was blown away. I just, well, I didn't even know what to say. I think I replied to the guy's tweet going, I don't even understand this. I, I don't understand. And I, I, I majored in history in school and I don't understand. <laughs> it's like, yeah. uh, but it's, it's just, it's just funny. That some things people get bent out of shape at online. It just cracked me up. Uh, Microsoft shares details, uh, new details on Phantom Dust HD remaster. Finally, we're hearing something. It's only been almost a year since they said, hey, we're making a Phantom Dust uh, HD remake. Well, this isn't even that. It's different. It's yeah. just totally a HD remake where they were originally going to do a whole different game. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, but that but they, studio closed. Yeah, well, they did, <laughs> but they did at E3, they did mention the HD remake, too. So. Yeah. But, you know, so uh, let's see. Oh, my iPad is so old. Um, <laughs> yeah, said so Microsoft plans plans to release free and paid DLC for Phantom Dust. Uh, there will so be weird. yeah, it is weird. Uh, the free it's a download. remake of a game. What DLC are going to add to it? Just put a game out. Yeah, says, we don't know if it's going to be popular for DLC yet. Well, there's going to be a lot of cards, <laughs> a lot of multiplayer stuff. Uh, I don't know. It's I liked Phantom Dust on the original Xbox. I don't actually own a copy of it. I played it uh, back in the day. When I was working at GameStop and I could take whatever game I wanted, you know, and play it for two or three days. And I remember playing it, but, um, it's, you know, it's a shame that the reboot got canceled, but I don't know. And yeah. The whole DLC thing seemed really weird to me. It's like, okay. Cause there's, you know, there is a single player campaign, of course. And it, you know, there wasn't the original game. Um, but it's like, okay, so you're playing a free DLC f- that makes Phantom Dust more accessible. I, I don't even understand what that means. It's like, I don't know. I think it's something about giving you extra cards when you start out or something. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like so any other weird. multiplayer game that has kind of the progression skipping DLC where like, oh, you can unlock guns or unlock this stuff without having to actually earn it in the game if you pay us money. Oh, Lots no, of games do it. I it's just, dumb. It but... is dumb. And I, and I go back. At the I wonder if they're going to be using some of the assets that they were using for the, the reboot. I don't know. I don't know. To do that. I don't know. I guess we'll find out probably in E3, which is what? Three weeks away? A month ago? A month away? We're close. Oh, is it early? Is it? I think it's mid June, isn't it? I think so. I don't know. Somewhere. So, slightly over a month, probably somewhere in that range. Yeah. Or right not, at a month. It's not not too to bad. Look it up. Speaking of weird things, at nine o'clock on a Thursday night, Nintendo releases a video about the 2DS XL. <laughs> <laughs> to no fanfare whatsoever. It was. It looks just, nice. Oh yeah, it looks awesome. And I mean, I understand. It doesn't look bad. Um, I mean, it's cool that they're doing it. I mean, I'm, I personally am not interested in it because I have a 3DS XL. But I yeah. mean, your, your wife not. It's supposed to be a lot no, lighter than that, though. Yeah, she doesn't like the size of the XLs. It's too big uh, for her hands. That's she what she like likes about the 2DS. It's smaller. Um, it, it is. <laughs> It, is, it was decently comfortable to hold the 2DS for a while, so this will be interesting with the yeah. new design. I mean, it looks really cool. I, I really like it. It's got all the same insides as the 3DS, so it's got that little faster processor and, and things like that. So, I mean, that's cool. They did no 3DS. The, uh, SD card. Card. So drop it and break it. Sorry. Yeah. Well, you know what? They may... It, it, I don't know. I haven't really read anything about the durability of it. I mean, that was one of the things mm-hmm. with the 2DS is that it was yeah. very durable. Drop it. So. Pick it back up. All right, we're good to go. This, I mean, It'd be kind of cool if that, like, blue uh, outline of it is maybe like a bumper of some sort. Yeah, and, and it maybe it yeah. is. I don't know. I, I know there's a hands-on video, but I've not watched it, so I don't know uh, anything about it. But it's going to be one fifty, um, so it's going to be fifty dollars less than a 3ds. Um, but you know, it's got the. It, it's nice that it has the the newer processor in it and things like that. So it's not just a, you know, a. Uh, uh, it's actually an upgrade to the 2DS. It's not a weird. Yeah, they moved the SD card down by the uh, yeah. cart slot, so yeah. it's a little easier to get to. 
Yeah, which cool. is nice. It's a, well, and that's why I bought a 64 gig card for mine, and I never had to take the back off of it. So it's like, man, what a pain in the butt to have to take the back off and swap out things and stuff like that. Yeah. But, I don't know, but it was just such a weird, it was kind of just a weird thing because I was <laughs> getting ready to go to bed that night, and I and a YouTube video came across the, the, the feed, and I was like, or no, I got an email, a PR email from Nintendo. I was like, we're announcing a new 2DS. I'm like, a new 2DS? It is 10 o'clock on Thursday the night. The 1DS. <laughs> what are you doing? It's like... Uh, I mean, just... I would have bought it if it had released alongside with the new 3DS. Yeah. I don't know. I mean... I don't, I don't, I don't use 3D at all. Well, I don't either. I mean, I don't I don't have it turned on at all. Um, but, you know, I guess it's good for little kids, you know, that uh, that yeah. do play it that don't... That way they won't turn the 3D, 3D on. Because, about that. Well, yeah, and there's a, there is a certain age that they say don't use 3D because it will hurt their eyes so or damage their eyes. So you yeah, I think it's seven. That. Yeah, seven or something like that. So, But, That's yeah. It was just really, it was just really weird that that uh, just a random time on a random day, and it was like kind of like they snuck it out and said, "Hey, here's a 2DS." Well, we're going home from work. See you guys later. You know, it's like, <laughs> like I don't even really okay, yeah. okay. but hey, whatever. I mean, I'm I mean, sure. maybe what well, I'd have to look it up. What time that would be in Japan? Yeah, and it may have coincided maybe that's why. with something in Japan. I don't know, um, but it was it it really caught me off guard. I think they're twelve hours ahead. Yeah, so that would be morning in Japan. So yeah, welcome to Japan, where the local time <laughs> is tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> um, Nintendo will continue support uh, on the 3DS in 2018. Um, so I know a lot of people were concerned that there would not be, you know, they would be discontinuing. And they said they have lots of games that they're going to announce at uh, E3 that will be out in 2018. So you know, if you still, by some strange reason, do not have a 3ds or a 2ds at this point i mean at this point i figure everybody has at least bought one maybe two <laughs> not me yeah <laughs> well uh, almost everybody so yeah there's still that's 95 percent of the people right here i'm on my well, third i think uh, i have is, my ds light still i don't use it though yeah uh, i've i'm on my second i bought i had the original 3ds mm -hmm. and i kept it until the new 3ds xl came out and then i bought one so i don't usually buy Buy and the unless, Pikachu in between. Yeah, I, I usually try not to buy those things because it's like, man, I could go, I could go down a real rabbit hole with that kind of stuff. When they keep, it's all you have left, John. You just gotta collect all the three DSs. <laughs> I've seen pictures of guys that collect every different color three DS oh, and Vita and Game Boy and Game Boy Advance and Game Boy in Color and it is insane. I mean Let's <laughs> tempt fate. What if Nintendo put out a three DS for every single Pokemon? Oh my god. Uh. Can you imagine? <laughs> you know, I really figured that they would do that with their covers for the newer three DS. You know, they were really big on those yeah. covers and they never really I don't know if they just didn't take off or or what, but they never well, really I mean, they didn't they didn't really release it here. Yeah. They they had like two versions of the the regular sized one here yeah i mean they were all in all in japan you know they they're really big on it and the only reason i know this is because since i now that i have an amazon japan account they send me emails every day going hey you bought this switch game why don't you buy some of these nintendo accessories and i'm like holy <laughs> crap there is a ton of <laughs> nintendo accessories that they've never released over here in america look at that <laughs> Yeah. Then he gets curious, then he starts spending money. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I don't need any more cases or, or, or covers or... Or funny-looking styluses. No. Styluses. Styli? <laughs> What's the plural of styluses? Styli? Styli. Styli. I have plenty of styli. Uh, so let's see. Nintendo announced today that, or not today, this was uh, May 1st. This was a couple days ago. Nintendo announced that Mario Kart 8 sold 459,000 copies. That's uh, physical and digital, and I believe that is worldwide. Um, let's see. Yes, the United States. Oh, no, wait, it says in the United States. The U.S. So, on the launch day. Yeah, on launch day, which makes it the fastest selling Mario Kart game ever. Uh, yes. Yeah, so 459,000 copies of Mario Kart 8 was sold on April 28th. That is crazy. I think yeah. fastest selling is a silly moniker. It's the biggest launch day, but yeah. fastest, maybe you should measure across a little bit of time. Yeah, well, they said... <laughs> 
They said the uh, the previous holder was Mario Kart for the Wii, which sold approximately four hundred and thirty three thousand and nine hundred on its launch day back in two thousand eight. Yeah, and it was a little bit further into the life cycle mm-hmm. of the Wii, too. Yeah, so. it was. Mm-hmm. So according to Nintendo, these sales represent a 45% attach rate in the U.S. Um, so 45% of Switch owners bought the game, which is pretty cool. Which kind of makes you think, what if they would have released it on launch instead of Zelda? Would it... Ooh. You know, I would not have gotten a Switch. No. I, yeah, I think Zelda was the key. I think Zelda was the key, too. I mean, of course, Mario Kart has sold really mm-hmm. well, but... Would Mario sold Kart more is than... a great game, but it's not new, Yeah, really. It's it's Mario Kart, so some people are like, yeah, I like Mario Kart, but I don't want to rush out and get a Wii for it, whereas right. Zelda is this big kind of phenomenon people talking about it a lot and it's revitalizing the franchise and it's does some cool things different from other open world games and you have to play it kind of hype around it that i don't think mario kart could have done even if it you know it's really good people will really like it but it's mario kart you know what to expect from it that's crazy though i'll tell you what especially since it's a re-release yeah (laughs) well and but you know what yeah and but there was a lot and i'm not surprised by how how many they sold because i think everybody who has a switch on my twitter feed bought mario kart because everybody was talking about it yeah Yeah. makes sense to me i mean it did just come out so people will talk about it and a lot of people like mario kart but it doesn't have that same oomph behind it as like zelda or if they had done the new mario game was it launched something like that would have that but mario kart it's popular but it doesn't have that same thing that same hype right all right speaking of zelda they talked about the uh they announced the first dlc pack um which it just went away on my screen deck on it <laughs> i love it when things don't load you want to read this too bad yeah exactly because I, I had the nice little list pulled up with everything that's going to be in it and now my ipad has decided to take a dump uh, mm. I tell you what, you know I love Apple stuff, but when you when you get when you get old Apple older Apple stuff, it's a year or two older than the last software update they want. It just runs like crap after a while. It's like they're like, "Hey, we want you to buy the new thing because your old thing doesn't work right anymore." But I because just, we've made it not work right. But I just bought this two years ago. It doesn't matter. We don't support it anymore. I just bought. Uh, okay, here we go. So. 1999 is the season pass. Uh, it will include the first uh, first wave DLC pack will be out this summer. Uh, it will include the Master Trials and the Trial of the Sword, the game's new hard mode, um, which is kind of interesting because the one of the things that the hard mode does those are two is, separate things. Yeah, those are two separate things. But the hard mode um, will do uh, the, any every character will have regen. Uh, health regen, which is kind of interesting. Um, so that would definitely make it a little harder. <laughs> uh, let's <Yeah>. see. <laughs> There's uh, Trials of the Sword, uh, new hard mode, Heroes Path mode, uh, the Travel Medallion. You get the uh, Corco, or however you say it, Corco mask, which is kind of cool. Korok. Korok. I can never pronounce it right. You know me in pronunciation. You're adding an O on the end. I know I am. <laughs> Um, eight pieces of new equipment. The travel medallion is pretty cool. Let's go. Ugh. Let's start with the trials, the sort of trial first. It was uh, yeah. previously known as the Cave of Trials Challenge, which includes about 45 total rooms in which players, as Link, must defeat all enemies in one room to move to the other. For starting out without any armor or weapons, and then defeating challenges will ensure that the Master Sword will always be in a glowing up power state. So if you defeat it, your master sword will always be glowing and you'll get that buff, which is kind of cool. That's pretty cool. Um, Hero's Path mode helps players track their progression. Um, Pretty much what it does is it shows you a line of everywhere you have ever been on the map. And Mm. if there's a certain section, that way you can look at it and say, I didn't go to this section or I missed this. It's kind of a way to help you find uh, different places you may have missed in the game, like uh, certain... um, uh, shrines or something like that because if you're like well i haven't found this shrine where's it at oh i didn't even go up to this very very far corner of the map maybe there's something up there that i missed um uh, the mask will give players the chance to find more of the seeds um it kind of does like what your uh little um 
your shrine sensor your does. Radar. Yeah, your radar does. Yeah. It flashes when you're close to shrine. If you're wearing the mask, it'll shake when you get close to uh, a seed. Um, and then there's all kinds of different little outfits and stuff like that. Um, then there's the Traveler's Medallion, which will be located in a new chest somewhere in the game. Once you collect the medallion, it creates a fast travel point where Link is standing. Um, so you could immediately just set it here. You can transport back to somewhere else, and then you can transport back to that exact same spot, which is actually kind of handy if you're way over somewhere and you just need to, you forgot something, you need to run back real quick, and you don't have to traverse all that. It's cool, but I mean, how are you supposed to find that chest? It. They're just like, it's going to be somewhere. Um, <laughs> it's a big map, but there's one location in the starting area where they all usually drop. Um, that's where the first DLC ones drop, so I'm guessing that it's going to be in that same area. Nobody has really said yet, but there was a, in the starting area, there was a, a spot over by one of the old abandoned buildings, and there was um, a couple of the uh, big machines there that would come to life, and they were up on top of the bricks around in there mm. so i'm maybe that i don't know if it drops in the same place or if it just drops in a random place i mean it says you know somewhere on the map but i don't know if it uh if you know if it drops in the same place and i guess we'll find out i bought it so <laughs> i mean that's cool but i've not run into anywhere in the game where that really matters because i have so many fast travel points from all the shrines and towers yeah. at that point that it doesn't really, you know, save me that much time for most areas of the map. I haven't either, but I guess for players who are, you know, replaying but yeah, if you're it starting it, over and you yeah. have it from the beginning, that would definitely change how you play. Yeah, it really would. It would really change how you play, which is, you know, and that's probably what it's more for anyway, is for those playing yeah. the hard mode over again than anything. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if I'm going to go back and play it hard mode again. I might, I don't know. I don't, I can't see That sounds anything. like something I might do in the future where it's like, I want to play Breath of the Wild again. Yeah. It's been years. I'll play hard mode, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or I'll go, oh, I haven't want to play Breath of the Wild again. I haven't played in a long time. I'll pull out the Wii U version and play it. <laughs> <laughs> and not play it on hard mode. But I don't know. But, I mean, it's. It, I mean, it sounds like you get a lot for uh, your money. Um, well, this is only one and, of them. Yeah, and this is only one of them. more DLC later in, like, the fall or something. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's only one of them. And you can't buy just certain packs. You have to buy the entire you buy the season, season pass. Oh, God. Yeah, so you so. Gotta pay for the, the outfits or armor or whatever you want to call it that you get, mm -hmm. that makes me not want to get this because they have a tingle outfit, and I hate tingle so much. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> it's like a fan. However, the phantom armor looks awesome. Yeah, it like, does. It looks really Concept cool. art for that. I want to see what it actually looks like in game, but the, the like art of it looks really cool. Yeah, it does. It looks really neat. So that'll be sometime this summer. I'm going to guess they'll probably have a date for us at E3, maybe, of exactly when it comes out. Or who knows? And it's out to do! Yeah, knowing Nintendo, they <laughs> that's what they may do. They like to do that kind of thing. So they may actually say, hey, yeah, we're... Uh, guess what? The announcement is today, and the release date is today. So, And speaking of season passes, I put this last one in here because I just... I can't believe how much getting it Getting out of control. It is getting out of control, Nintendo. Fire Emblem Echoes Season Pass is detailed. It is $45 for the Season Pass. More expensive than yeah. the game. Yes, it's $5 more expensive than the game, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and if you buy them all separately, I think it's like 52 or yeah, something. Yeah, I was going to say, you did some quick math before everybody got here, how much it was. But yeah, they're all listed separately. So you get one, two, three, four, five. Five different DLC packs for your season pass. And you get everything from maps to new dungeons to whatever. I, I don't know. I'm just... It's good that they have a DLC map out so you know what you're getting mm -hmm. not everybody does that but it's crazy that it's more than the game that's just ridiculous yeah it doesn't make any <laughs> sense to me whatsoever it does, and, and it's a 3ds game on top of that so i can only imagine how much space yeah. this will take up on a memory card um yeah All I would of hope it. i'd hope it's bigger bigger than the you know i hope it's as big as the game but you know oh my gosh uh and i'm buying the game when it comes out but i am not buying the season pass i can guarantee you that one i am not buying the season pass for that game 45 dollars. can't get behind that huh no i can't get behind 45 dollars for a season pass not for not for a game like that that just tells me that i don't know i'm worried it's one of those cases where 
you know, you're going to get a lot of backlash from people. You know, you got a lot of backlash from people, silly backlash about the Zelda DLC. You know, a lot of people were upset about that. But now you're now you're saying, okay, well, here's the new Fire Emblem game, and you're going to have to pay as much for the, you're going to have to pay more for the DLC than you are the game. And it's just yeah, it's it just sounds not like Call they should have waited to put the game out for an extra however many months, and then yeah. put at least half of the DLC in the game, and then have a season pass that's twenty or something. Well, and that's and what then, I worry. Then with all that in there, you could have charged you know fifty or sixty for the game to start with because it had right. more stuff or whatever. Well, it's just weird, and that's what I want. And that's what I worry about. You know, a lot of you know, is it, is it going to affect the game? Is there a bunch of stuff that they left out of the game that you know that could have been in the game that they're just doing DLC for and calling it DLC to charge extra money? I don't know. It's it's so weird, and you know, <laughs> Nintendo goes from one thing and says, "Well, we really don't do DLC," and then they go, "Well, now we're going to start doing DLC, and it's going to be free." Well, now we're going to start doing DLC, but you're going to have to pay just a little bit for it. And now you're going to do now we're going to do DLC, and it's going to cost you more than game. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> it's like I don't know. It's it's so weird. But Fire Emblem fans are hardcore, man. They, Even if yeah. all yeah. that content is really great, and it mm-hmm. is like really cool for expanding the game, and it's worth all of that money, and actually is worth forty five dollars. It's still weird. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I, I I don't know if I can hold with that. I just <laughs> and I love Fire Emblem, and you know, I'll, like I said, I'll buy the game. You know, I've got all the Fire Emblem games, so of course I'm going to buy it. I'm not going to have all the DLC because I'm not going to buy it. I didn't even buy the DLC for the last Fire Emblem game that was out, and it was reasonably priced DLC. But so I'm definitely not buying DLC at forty five dollars more than I paid for the game. Well, I can't say that. I did buy the collector's edition, so the collector's edition was sixty. So. <laughs> I guess if I look at it that way, that I'm not paying as much for the game, but or paying as much for the DLC. But I don't know. This isn't Call of Duty. You know, I, Call of Duty and B- Battlefield set a precedent. You know, our game is sixty dollars. Our DLC season pass is fifty dollars. But you know, you get this and this and this and this and this and this. And while yes, you are getting a lot of DLC with the Fire Emblem game, forty five dollars is a lot to charge for. You know, I, I'm hoping it's a lot of content. It looks like a lot of content, but. I don't know. When the rubber meets the road, will it really be that much content or will it be, you know, will it add hours of gameplay? Will it add an hour of gameplay? Will it, you know. Well, it's hard to judge with this. Whereas, you know, multiplayer maps, you can guess, okay, it's going to be, I can expect sort of this amount from it if it's two maps per time or three or four, whatever. There's that expectation from previous games, you know, at least a semblance of what you'll get from it. Whereas this, you're like, I don't know. Well, and it's, (laughs) it's kind of like everybody's complaint with the, the uncharted, uh, expansion thing that's coming out on a separate disc uh with the two girls from uncharted 4 it's like uh, a different game no it's a it's a, it's a, it's a different game yes but it's included if you if you bought the season pass with uncharted 4 that's included with it yep <laughs> i didn't know that that's yeah. how I got it. Uh, from yeah. what i heard it was like something that was maybe smaller and they've expanded on it when they start making they're like oh we want to do more of this than we originally planned and so now that's why it's this bigger thing but no they're just releasing it separately on a disc for forty dollars so you know people who didn't buy the expansion expansion season pass can i don't care it just seems weird if it's if it's enough of a game to be worth forty dollars if it's about the same as an uncharted uncharted game minus a little bit then whatever who cares i guess how much is the season pass for uncharted though i don't know i don't either uh, I would think thirty bucks. I, see, and I would think I would think I would buy the. Uh, I really don't know. Mine. I bought the. Uh, I have the gold edition that it came with. So I don't even know how much it is. Let's look. I'm just curious. I'm pretty sure it was thirty bucks. Yeah. So I mean, you know, you could pay thirty dollars and get the expansion, the season pass, and get everything with that, or you can pay forty dollars for a physical version of just that section of DLC. It's just kind of weird. <laughs> Well, that's the thing is, I don't think that it's actually DLC. Yeah. Well, that does. Yeah, that's a pre-order thing, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Well, and they they removed the season pass from the PSN store, too. (laughs) (laughs) Of course they did. Yeah. Because they want to sell... That seems to track with what I've heard, and maybe I'm just misremembering something, that it was originally going to be a smaller thing, so we'll include it with a season pass, but oh wait, we want to do more with it now, and then Sony's probably like, well, maybe you should charge more for it. (laughs) 
who knows what all that behind the scenes stuff actually yeah. shakes up. We'll but again, it's, that. it's, it's another one of those weird things. It's so strange because I, I remember reading the thing. I'm like, okay, why is everybody having such a, a crying about this? Why are people fighting about it? And I look at it, I'm like, oh, well, it's the expansion. Cause it says in the thing, if you own the season pass, you know, you don't have to buy this, you get it for free. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Okay, now maybe I understand why some people are like, burn them. <laughs> but, you know, look at the well, quality of Naughty Dog's games. In, uh, right. December. Yeah. So if it's a full-on, even if it's just DLC and was the only way you could get it, and it's a full-on campaign and it lasts two-thirds the length of what a normal Uncharted game would be, that sounds about right with the production values yeah. and stuff they put in there. If it's as good as a normal Uncharted game, as far as that goes, and it doesn't seem cheap, then why not? Yeah. They've kind of earned that a little bit for just their reputation over the years of putting out all these good games that they can kind of get away with it. Now, if this comes out and it's terrible, then they won't be able to do it the next time around. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Once again, the great test. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, mean, it happens all the time with different people, too. (laughs) Plenty of examples to go look at. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, Spinner asked at the beginning of the show our thoughts on the PS Plus games for May. Um there's, there be the list. Yeah, the list is in the show. I know one of them, and it is great. Tales, yeah, Tales from, from the Borderlands is awesome. Is awesome. I'll, I'll play Tales. I haven't um, played it yet, so I'm looking forward to that. I, I Going back to that Critical it. Role thing that I watched, one of the people on there is the, ma- uh, the main female in the Tales from the Borderlands. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, that I game forget, was uh, fantastic. Fiona, that's the name of the character. That's right. Yeah. I was trying to remember. I was like, it's been a while since I played. What was the name? Fiona. Uh, I have no idea about any of the other ones. Yeah, Abzu, I've just Abzu seen videos of it. It looks pretty, but I don't know anything about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought Port Royal sounded, Port Royal 3 sounded familiar. I want to say that's like a strategy, it's a strategy, strategy game. game. It's a strategy game. Yeah, it is a strategy game. I've never played any of them, but I know a lot of people like them on, uh, on Blood Knight. Uh, oh, I see. How interesting. So. Royale looks kind of interesting. Like, I don't know if I would play it. Might as well download it though, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, Type Raider and Laser Disc Defender or Laser Disco Defender. I have no idea anything about those. Um, Blood Knights on PS3. I really don't know anything about that or Blood Knights. Action adventure game. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, price of admission is worth it for Tales from Tales from Borderlands. That game is fantastic. I think that's the best one that they've done. Certainly, if you're just thinking of the comedic side of Telltale, oh, it's yeah. probably the best one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Blood- and even if you didn't like Borderlands, it's good. You can play it. You don't need to have played Borderlands or even like Borderlands. I know some people who didn't like Borderlands who actually mm-hmm. like this game, so mm-hmm. yeah. it's pretty cool. What? People don't like Borderlands? Those kind of people exist? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm actually I'm not a huge fan. It's okay. Get out right now. It's all right. I, I think it's fun co-op, but I don't. I don't like it single yeah, play it, at all. It is yeah, fun co-op. Either. That's that's. I that's, like it both stuff. ways. Co-op is definitely better, but yeah, Tales from the Borderlands is great, regardless of anything about the main Borderlands games. Yeah, I mean it's okay. The Borderlands games are okay. They're not like my favorite games. I won't go out of my way when one comes out to buy it. They're yeah. really well made loot they games. Are. They are really well. It's like made let's do games. Diablo with shooters, and they achieved that goal very well. Yep. But Tales from Borderlands was a whole different story. I think I bought it on sale. I don't remember what system I've got that on. I think I have it on PS4. I don't remember. But it was it was really good. And I liked it a lot. And I, not being a huge Borderlands fan, I liked it a lot. And uh, well, I mean, it's the only uh, character that's from Borderlands is Handsome Jack. Yeah. So you've got all of your main characters are new just to that game Mm -hmm. and it does a really good balance of sort of a little bit of drama, mostly just comedic, fun, goofy adventure stuff. Yeah. It's a little bit of intrigue with the way that they shape the story. So it's like, who is this mystery character that plays out over a couple of episodes and you find out who it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, I mean, a, that one alone, I think, is worth it. That uh, you know, some of the other ones kind of look interesting, and like I say, I'll blindly add them all to my account, and then someday go, <laughs> "Oh, there's a game here." Well, I, oh yeah, I have this thing. Yeah, everybody starts talking about, "Hey, do you remember this game that came out?" I'm like, "No." Well, you've had it on your account for seven years. It's like, oh, <laughs> God. I guess maybe I should play it. Um, but yeah, so other than that, I've got nothing else to talk about. Um, we still have, I think 
13 days left on the Digimon yep. World giveaway. Still got time to enter. Yep, so there's time to enter. So go on our uh, on the site, and uh, the link uh, to the Gleam uh, application will be there. Or if you, it's pinned on the uh, Twitter account, uh, at GL underscore podcast. On the Twitters. Um, so you can... Um, Enter there. There's uh, a little under a thousand entries on it, so there's still a pretty good chance of uh, Dang, of getting in. So. Yeah, there yeah. was. Uh, I posted on Keg, and there were some people that entered too, so that's good. Yeah. So yeah, there's people entering it every day because we get uh, a lot of followers on uh, on Twitch, which is one of the ways to enter, and Twitter. So there's always yeah, there's I think there's eight different ways to enter it, um, which is uh, you know pretty cool. Uh, and then it's a pretty cool game. I know it's on sale right now on PSN, but hey, well, I buy it when you can have a chance to win a free copy of it. <laughs> That's right. I wouldn't pay for it. So. No, nope. not if I had a chance. Not if I had a chance to win it, I wouldn't pay for it. I saw it on clearance at Target this weekend for like fifteen dollars. You saw Digimon World, the new one, on clearance already? Really? Yeah. That game just that... came out a month ago, and it's already yeah. on Are clearance. Are you sure you're not talking about the like, one that this... came out last year? Nope, nope. This was the new one. And when I go back to Target this week, I'll try to grab a picture. Huh. Yeah. Could have been a mistake, but I was just really surprised. Yeah, that's really weird because that thing hasn't even been out a month and a half yet. Oh, oh. Target does yeah. clearance. Yeah, I know they do. Um, but usually it's they hold on to them longer than a month. That's really weird. Hmm. But, uh, yeah. So, other than that, I got nothing. Anything else? Anything else video game-wise before? Nothing here either. Because we're going to talk... We're going to talk some Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I know Eric and me and Nathaniel have seen it. Um, uh, I know Robert hasn't. So, but so I'll be um, I'll be heading out. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. Away. It is going to be. Tell me a thing. It is going to be spoiler filled. We're going to talk a lot of spoilery things just just for a few minutes. So it's uh, in space. Yeah, it's in space. There's a lot <laughs> of people got... in it, and they do some fighting. No. <laughs> That's it. I've spoiled the entire movie. We'll see you. No. <laughs> and there uh, are yeah. extra scenes in the credits because yeah. Marvel. Yeah. Yep. I'll catch you guys and later. I left before the Chat, last. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Absolutely. All right. See you, Robert. We'll see you next time. All right. I have to readjust. I have to readjust Eric and uh, Nathaniel here real quick. Oh, no, we're getting all mushed. We're getting all mushy mushed. Uh, so, yeah, if there's anybody in the chat who has not seen Guardians of the Galaxy I, and don't want it spoiled, run away. Yeah, run away now. <laughs> Turn this the is, volume down. This is the chance. Oops, I deleted the wrong square. We've all disappeared. <laughs> oh, no. We've all disappeared. No. Yeah, I totally deleted me, and I didn't mean to delete me. I don't have things titled, so nobody knows what the title is for. <laughs> so I will just. Who needs organization? Nah, I don't need. Screw organization. What do you need organization for? Organization's what? for chumps. What kind of cut rate stream is this? I like to live it on the edge. <laughs> I do want to. St I'm going to stop the recording here real quick and start it again because I want to. Uh, I don't want to have to edit it out. Because so, <laughs> I'm lazy when it comes to editing, so I don't want to. Eric, are you going to hang over there on that far right of the screen the whole time? Because that's what I'm going to. I'm going to exit. I'm going to screen capture it at. So whatever, if you want. I just matter. can't stay. I just can't stay very much longer. Well, we're not going to talk too too long about it anyway. I don't want to. Yeah, only at least five hours. We got to talk at least twice what the movie is length running time. Yeah, right? it's where my camera is positioned. <laughs> I got to fix that. But all right, I made you tall. Whatever. I don't care. Sweet. <laughs> Always want to be taller. Look how look how tall you are now. <laughs> right, well, let me let out. me save this here real quick. Show. Show. So, yeah, did any, did, has anybody in the chat room actually watched it? I know Matt has. Um, Looks like uh, Way CEO or however you say that name has, because they said it was better than the first movie in chat. Oh now. yeah, I agree with that. It is way better than the first movie. Well, I won't say way better. It's better. Dude, I love the first movie. First movie is great. It's my favorite Marvel movie until I saw this one. Well. And mostly because I love space opera stuff, so I'll, it's kind I'll, of I'll painting straight I'll put, it top, I'll put it in my top five. Winter Soldier is, is my favorite Marvel movie. I have It's really, really good, but it's just something about, like, there's all these different superhero ones, yeah. and they're all great, but... There's only just the one Guardians of the Galaxy style thing. Well, now two. Right. So it just feels more unique to me. 
I haven't. And again, it's speaking straight to the space opera nerd in me. So yeah, I did not. My my biggest complaint. I did not like the music for the for this movie. I oh, liked really? it much better in the first one. Yeah. Oh my, my gosh! My wife and I. No, nope. I even I bought this. Not. I like this one so See? well. I bought the sound soundtrack. Uh, I bought, the, I bought the it. first one, but I am just not. It's interested different, in the but no. still just as good as the first one. Well, yeah. I, I like it. Plus, Please. they fit they fit it in more thematically, like literally into the movie a lot more this time around. Oh yeah, they not do. Your Cat Stevens. Oh, dude, Cat Stevens. Great. <laughs> oh. What's wrong with I'm good. I like the music for the first one a lot, and that's what I was expecting. But nope, and that's the only complaint I have. Other than I like the character development, but maybe there's like too much a little bit sometimes. Like, oh. did I really need to see the the uh, rocket and Zandu moment. I mean, I thought it dragged on just a little bit too long. Other than that, I was very entertained. Well worth my time. Oh, really? I didn't think it. I didn't think it did drug on that long Dude, at all. I thought it. Was I really didn't good. know how long it was because when I got out of the theater, I thought it was like really fast. And I was looking at the time. I was like, okay, now I know why I'm hungry because it lasted longer than I thought. <laughs> well, the, the actual <laughs> movie was like only. It at all. The actual movie was only about two hours and fifteen or twenty minutes. But my gosh, my theater played twenty minutes, thirty minutes yeah, of too. previews before, missed, it, so it was nine thirty. I missed before the last. I missed the last endings credit thing because I left. I didn't know there was going to be one more. Oh, there was. Yeah, there's five. There was five total. I I saw. I missed the Stan Lee one too. My wife said we got to go. I was like, okay. Well, what I knew was, there was a couple. Yeah, the last one. What was funny was is the, my wife was sitting there, you know, uh, uh, watching the movie. She can usually make it through the whole movies now, and she went, "I really gotta go to the bathroom." And I'm like, "Are you sure you want to get up and go to the bathroom right now?" Yeah, I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh, okay. And the point where she got up to go to the bathroom was when him and Peter, when Peter and Ego was standing there talking, and oh. and she says, "I'll be right back." And as soon as right, she walked right out the door, the turn. <laughs> right, every, I mean, everything happened. I mean, everything happened. Uh, Baby Groot threw up. He turned on everybody. You know, it was like, I was like, oh my gosh, you missed it all. She came back. What did I miss? I said so much. I can't explain everything. it to you right now. You're gonna like, have you to missed move. the whole story. You're just going to have to wait. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was, I liked it. I, I liked this, it a lot. I like this movie. I think it did a better job of balancing time for everybody, mm-hmm. whereas the first yeah. one was focused in a everybody lot more screened. on just a few of the characters. Time. Yeah. So I really like that we got a lot more Nebula in this movie because, one, I just like Cara Gillan ever since she was on Doctor Who, and yeah. I think she's really cool as that character. Yeah. And just between uh, the, the sisters' sort of storyline through this one was really cool seeing that, and it ties in with all the other kind of themes all about family and all that that so, they have through this whole yeah. kind of, both movies, actually. Mm-hmm. Did you see the trailers for Thor and the trailers for Spider-Man? I'd they seen were, them before. I, yes, okay, I've seen I had before. seen them. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't seen the one for Thor, so I'm kind of interested in that, but we'll see. Oh, yeah, that movie looks all. great. I'm calling this the year of the, the space opera because we have, yeah, starting off with Guardians, then we have the uh, Valerian City of a Thousand Planets in July, then we have Thor, I'm counting, because that just totally looks like a space opera type movie. Yep. And then we've got Star Wars at the end of the year. Yep. And we've got some more other just sci-fi stuff like Alien yeah. and Blade Runner and all sorts of other stuff this year. I'm yeah. going to have fun. I thought it was really I, good. I, I mean, I really I, liked yeah, a lot I of it. I, mean, I like that. I love I laugh, that they have to go that. more weird. I probably oh, yeah. they and I think that's what I liked about it so much is they went a little weird and they kind of dove into a, to a lot of the weird stuff in the comic book that if you if you never so really knew weird. a lot about the comics, you were kind of like, well, who is that character? What's it like? Uh, well, like we talked to, like me and Nathaniel talked about the, the ending scene with um, – um, Sylvester Stallone yeah, and uh, Rames and stuff like that. Yeah, those Rames were all and, yeah, uh, Rames. Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, yeah, they were all original <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, except for one from the original 1969 comic book. Comics, yeah. yeah, I mean, my only my only problem with that whole thing was Miley Cyrus was the voice of mastermind or whatever. Yeah, but I didn't know that until like, oh, later. I just thought it was a fun, goofy soon voice. I, I had no idea who it was until later. As soon as I heard that voice, I'm like, son of a... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that was cool. The The whole Baby but, Groot thing was really cool. Baby Groot is super adorable, and they had just the perfect amount of them in the movie, yeah. so that they're not just, oh, look, it, we know people like Baby Groot, so we're just going to do him the whole time. They didn't do that, so that was good. And it was like you I said, the... I am Groot. 
<laughs> my my one complaint was is that you know Adam Warlock wasn't in it since he was you know they were I, as soon as I saw the Gold Lady and when the original trailer came out back in what was it last fall I don't even remember when it came whenever out. it was yeah, yeah whenever it was and I saw the I saw the Gold Lady which I can't remember her name I went oh my gosh we're gonna see Adam Warlock and then we went through the whole movie and never saw Adam Warlock and then. Um, and then at the end, he was in the stinger. I'm like, oh, that means he's not going to be in anything for <laughs> forever. I was reading today. They said that I the Guardians know. of the Galaxy 3 will set up the next 10 years of wow. Marvel movies. So we're going we're to get Infinity War. I was thinking maybe Secret Wars 2 because there's a lot of stuff you could do with that, too. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. don't know, don't know anything do. about know what anything. the second part of that thing is going to be, so they could do whatever. Yeah, they could do whatever <laughs> at this point. Um, I liked how the uh, the guys, when they were in their little unmanned shipped ships, their sounds on their end sounded like old arcade games. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, they're all just playing video games, and then they have great. people like behind them, and all like oh, you lose, and they're like, oh, you yeah. suck. Yeah, you <laughs> suck. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, as soon as On a meta level, too, it's just kind yeah. of fun all around, just yeah. from, oh, we're hearing bloop bloops, and yeah. it's also funny when you think a little deeper about it, like, oh, wait. <laughs> I really liked how they did uh, Kurt Russell, though, because that was one of my yes. big worries with this movie was is yeah. when when – like I said, when I watched that trailer when it came out back in whenever, and he stepped out and goes, oh, I, I'm your father. I, and I, I remember standing up at the house and looking at Nikki and going, he's a planet. She went, what? I said, Star-Lord's <laughs> dad is a planet. I said, this is not right. What are they going to do? He's supposed to I, be a planet. There are very few other actors who could have done it well yeah. just because, one, he kind of looks a lot like Chris Pratt. Mm -hmm. Just like, yeah, he could be his dad. I see that. But yeah. also just charm-wise and everything, they're very kind of similar yeah. uh, type of actors and personalities just in the different roles that they play and stuff. So yeah. that worked out really well. He played both sides of it sort of when he's trying to be all nice and then when he turns and he's all evil. I don't even think he's all that evil. He's just... Kind uh, of like, oh, I want to do this because of my motivations, but oh, never mind that the entire rest of the galaxy wouldn't want to be taken over by me. Yeah, I just, I, I don't it care. Was, I'm just in it for me. I thought it was really paced well because of the ego. whole, yeah. Well, the whole time, you know, it's just kind of rolling and rolling. Yeah, we got the family thing. We got the family thing. Oh, look, he's, you know, he's found this and, you know, his dad's being this and he's all happy, happy, happy. You get to this plateau and all of a sudden, oh, look, we found all these dead bodies. <gasps> <laughs> it was like, oh, okay. Now we understand why y why they were mad at Yondu for getting ki you know and kicking him out because it wasn't just uh, Star Lord that he kidnapped. It was all the kids that he kidnapped, and he was killing all the kids. And I, t I, I looked at Nikki and afterwards we were eating dinner, and I looked at Nikki. I went, man, that movie just turned dark. <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> it was like yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Oh my gosh, he was killing kids, and he was this and that. It's like, ooh, that that movie turned dark really quick. Yeah. <laughs> that that was interesting. I need to look up more more on the history about that because now I'm now I'm interested in learning more. I really yeah. like uh, Mantis. Yeah, yeah, because she's both super hilarious. Well, especially when she's with Drax. Those yeah. two together are just like <laughs> the weird character who's like doesn't act like normal human beings have weird emotions. Putting them together just had so many funny lines. It was great. You were beautiful. But then they have the All touching the scene too where he's re remembering his family and uh -huh. she starts bawling when she's like using her empath abilities on her. Just like, yeah. oh man, I'm not crying, you're crying. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and she was, she was a totally different I mean, she was kind of the same. She had the same powers in the comic book, but she was totally not like that in the comic book. She yeah. was yeah. totally, uh, you know, she wasn't kind of the the weird, you know, character. She was like a, I'm going to, but, you know, but yeah. I it mean, was that's hilarious. kind of what they've done all the way around with Guardians of the Galaxy. That's doing what you, a very new spin on it. That's what you got to have to, you got, you got to yeah. do. Cause you got to remember that stuff was written in the late sixties, early seventies and it's sci-fi. Yeah. And a lot of it is weird. I mean, I'm not going to lie. A lot of it is really weird. If you go back and read it today, it's like, Ooh, man. It is. Did either of you think Looney Tunes at all in this movie? While watching it, uh -uh. there are two specific spots that I was like thinking Looney Tunes. One when the Ravagers are closing in on their crash ship and Rocket Raccoon has all the traps. Yeah. And he's like blowing them up in the air and you see him like go over the tree line with the moon in the background. And it's just very not realistic physics wise just to make yeah. it more comedic. I was like that. 
seems like a Looney Tunes cartoon, but I I thought that was great. And then also when they're like doing all their warp jumps and their faces are all yeah, yeah, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to see the Watchers. So we finally got to see the Watchers. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, Stan Lee. <laughs> yeah. Poor Stan Which, Lee. Did you get Did you get the thing with the Stan Lee stinger where he was talking <laughs> about was he? FedEx yeah, man. then I was a FedEx man. So it kind of plays into that. He knows in every movie that he's you know he makes you wonder what he actually is. Yeah, is he like a Watcher because you know or something like that? Well, because you know, if he is, he doesn't look like them, and they're kind of bored by him. So I don't right. know that he actually is a Watcher. But that was. <laughs> Maybe, maybe he's just Stan Lee. Maybe. And yeah. in the cinematic universe, Stan Lee is just this cool dude who just gets to be different people. You yeah. Know? yeah. I thought that was really Didn't weird. Didn't be anything though. more than that. It was like, <laughs> yeah, and, and in this movie, I was a FedEx guy, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. He just acknowledged. Yeah. He just acknowledged. <laughs> that seems to be that they're just playing with the fans just because it's a funny thing yeah. more than they're trying to be serious with it. They're just doing a little wink and a nod. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I we wanted to see it in 3D. It definitely would have been a 3D movie to see, especially the group dancing at the beginning with the the fight scene. That was very oh yeah, that 3D-ish. was really cool. Yeah, it's, it's all like you know blurry in the background because you're focused yeah. on the group, and then everybody just like crashes next to him. Like, hey, buddy, <laughs> get out of the way. But in other words, I I want to watch it again before I say yes. This is my number one Marvel movie, but it's. It's pretty close to being probably the number yeah, one. Yeah, it's one way, one. way up there. If you like the first Guardians of the Galaxy, you'll like this one. Yeah, you'll like this one a lot. So There you go. There's our little spoiler thing on yep. Guardians of the Galaxy. So well, uh, the next one, next movie I'm going to see is we'll go see Wonder Woman in two weeks. That looks weeks. really, really good. Uh, next one, I, we'll see unless reviews just completely trash. I don't want to see the King Arthur movie. Yeah, I heard good. I heard and good. Alien. Those are the other two in May that I want to see. The King, Pirates, Arthur, no. the King Arthur movie looks cool, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if I'll go to the theater and watch it. Pirates, I will not looks, watch till it comes out. If on you've video. seen the full yeah, trailer you for know, King Arthur, I, you'll I see wait, why wait it is a big screen movie because it looks very big and epic fantasy, crazy. Now, who did treatment. you say did that? As Guy Ritchie. He did so it just Warcraft. Looks, it looks. No. Guy Ritchie has done lots of stuff. He what started off doing done? like Lock Stock and he and Snatch okay. and stuff, but then he did uh, he did the Sherlock Holmes movies gotcha. recently. Okay. I was trying he to remember was, uh, what movies. Rock and Roller. Okay. Yeah. All right, I got you. So yeah. That's kind of where he comes from. But it just looks think- bonkers as and I, I want to see a bonkers movie. I don't care if it ends up being kind of trashy. It looks like it has Jude Law in it, I think, and he looks like he's yeah. just gonna chew the scenery as the villain, and it looks like it'll be just a dumb fun time. Yeah, yeah I think it'll be, it'll, it'll be good. I hope I so. Can. Anyway, that's what I want. <laughs> I have to go see Wonder Woman, the, even if the reviews are bad. We'll still go see it because the wife demands. Yeah, I want to see that see one too. It. it looks really, really good visually from I'm, the trailers. I'm hoping it's that not it as is... dark. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping that it is. It does for the DC universe what Captain America: The First Avenger did. It's a time piece, uh, you know, a time period piece. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm hoping for because I really yeah. like the first Captain America movie. It's one of my favorite Marvel movies. It's in my top three. I love that movie. Um, so I'm hoping that the, you know, I'm hoping that Wonder Woman movie is like that. That it's a you know, it's I mean, if you do it right, it automatically gives you just a different, yeah. you know, flavor of a movie because of just it's set in a different time period. Yeah, we'll see. It looks good. Fingers crossed. It looks way, way, way better than Justice League does. Well, Justice League just looks like, hey, it's Batman v Superman again. Kind of, we're trying to do fifteen thousand things in one movie, and it's probably going to be a mess. Hopefully, it won't be as much of a mess as Batman versus Superman, but I don't know. We'll see. Wonder uh, Woman just looks a lot more fun to me, so I'm looking more forward to that one more than the other one. Yeah, we shall see, though. At least at this point, you know, maybe they'll have another trailer yeah. out for Justice League later, closer to when it comes out. And be like, oh, that looks a lot better than I was expecting. Who knows? Probably. All right. So let me save that. So I can you guys. Because I'll tag All right, guys. I got to go. All right, but dude. Catch you next time. That was fun. Good times. I, I like, yeah, like I said, I like Guardians. My issues with it are dumb things. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was entertained for the whole time. Oh, yeah, I was too. And I got lots of laughs in, so that's important. Yeah, there was a lot of, and there were so many that I need to go back and watch it again. There were so many yeah, little, I need to go. Ah, it's little like, dang, things. I Go back and Sight gags. Oh man, the Zune thing slayed me. Oh <laughs> that yeah, was dude, that Zune that's what all the people that are listening to you. <laughs> is a, so Spinner is the Assassin's Creed movie any good? I thought about renting it from Redbox myself. 
That's what I want to know. I have completely forgot that movie came out. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it did come out in, like, I knew it, yeah. several months ago. I just wondered I just if totally it was... I forgot about it. I didn't forget it. Well, I forgot about it, but then I saw it in... I don't know. We were going through Walmart the other night or something, and I saw it was out, and I went, you know what? I, I don't want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm scared. I'm scared. Decent for okay. Well, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of of. Uh, I have to put that on my rental list of yeah. stuff to remember that it exists so I yeah. can rent it. <laughs> oh, well, absolutely. Put that on my rental list because, in fact, the wife got a bunch of um, Redbox rentals, free rentals for Christmas from one of the one of her kids. That's what they gave her for Christmas. So we've got a bunch of them to get rid of. So. Sounds like I will uh, have to use them on that. I don't know when they expire. I guess I really need to look into that. They may be expired. By now. <laughs> Yesterday. Oh. It wouldn't surprise me. So. <laughs> All right, chat room. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Um, this this will be up on the feed sometime tomorrow on the audio feed. Uh, I got some work to do tomorrow, so I won't get it up early, early. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm glad you guys uh, stopped by and hung out. It's always a cool thing. And we'll see you.